Good morning. Good morning. Hi, my name's Dave with Trax. And if you own a retail store, or know someone that owns a retail store, I'm gonna show you how measuring your customer traffic will guarantee a minimum of a 15% increase in sales. So that's my challenge. The bottom line is if, if you can measure something, you can improve it. And what we do is we've found a way to very accurately measure your actual customer traffic through any retail store. So as you can see here, we've got two lines we've set up, one on the threshold. That's the trigger line. When someone walks through that line, it activates the system and it can tell which way they're going. When they walk in, they're counted, but the system also has a four second delay. So if there's a husband, wife, and three children, it's one buying opportunity. That's how we count it. When they're leaving, they'll trip the inside line first, and that tells the microprocessor to make them invisible, and they're not counted. And then we also know that every retail store out there gets a very high percentage of non-customer activity. The mailman, the UPS driver, employees that leave and come back for lunch. So we remove that automatically from the system. So what you have is a series of 30 different reports that are really astounding when, when you look at the big picture. But what we're able to do here, as you can see, count each and in, in every individual opportunity that comes in. You can see down here in the bottom center a, a couple that came in. But you can also very easily spot, is it a salesperson, is it the mailman, is it a UPS driver? And we can remove those non-customer counts one of two ways. We can either set up an automatic removal of a percentage, or you can select those with a single click and remove those non-customer counts. So for the first time in retail history, you're gonna have nearly a 100% accurate incoming customer traffic count. So what can we do with that? If you're looking at the photos and you have a question about what's that person doing? You can click the actual photo and blow it up and see what's really happening. Very simple. And there are a couple other options that we provide. So if you want to, it's a little bit more advanced, but if you wanted to say, well, Sally talked to this customer, there's a drop down that you can select. Jesse talked to this customer. Kelly talk to this customer and you just select the name. I can go through a hundred photos in about a minute and what that'll do at the end of the day is give you an overall number of customer opportunities that you had and also who spoke with those opportunities. So then we can calculate conversion ratios by salesperson and just some incredible analytics overall for your company. So there are, as I mentioned, 30 different reports that we provide. I want to kind of give you a, a, a high level overview of, of some of the things that we do, but we've got the best sales goals program ever invented for the jewelry industry. The, the ability to analyze how was last week and how does that compare to that same week last year or over the last seven years, for example, are we getting better or are we getting worse? Very easy analytics in terms of if I ran a, a big marketing campaign, how did it impact my business? When it comes to staffing, one of the biggest problems that I see in the jewelry industry is stores that are underperforming, it's really just a people problem. Most of the time it's a simple staffing issue. And this allows us to very easily analyze, you know, when do you get your peak traffic counts? There are several reports that allow a store manager to be able to identify when you're in overflow, when you're understaffed. We also tie in with the National Weather Service. You're gonna be able to see the overall traffic for the day, but also physically what happened. Did you have a bad storm that day? Uh, get closed down because of some kind of a weather event? One of my favorites here is called the Hot Zone Report. And it allows us to see at a glance if you're overstaffed or understaffed. If you've got blue hours, the numbers that you actually see are true net customer traffic. If you've got blue hours, you're overstaffed. Your salespeople are twiddling their thumbs. If you've got a lot of orange or red hours, you're understaffed. And it, it's okay to have an occasional red hour. As a matter of fact, if, if, if I'm doing consulting for a company, 
and they don't have an occasional red hour, that's a problem as well. There's a traffic issue. But if you've got red hours back to back to back to back like this, you're losing money. They can't go to the restroom. They certainly can't take a break to have lunch. And a lot of customers will see these long lines or large groups of people and they'll say, I've got to come back. And sometimes they never do, right? So it's a wonderful report. It also allows you to, to analyze this, this same report in four or eight week increments on the same page. So I can, at a glance, scroll through two months to see if, am I, am I really able to resolve that issue? With, with understaffing. If I, I have a, a dear friend of mine, his name's Gary Wilbers. Gary's got 14 stores in the Midwest and he had a 15% increase in sales. He's got a great testimonial on my website. He had a 15% increase in sales. This report's automatically emailed to each of his store managers and they took it upon themselves to just move the scheduling from the blue hours to the red. 15% increase in sales, it's, it's gigantic what that is when you apply a little science and a simple algorithm to this. We assume that the average jewelry salesperson can comfortably work with about two customers an hour, but that's, once we get to know your company, that, that is completely adjusted. That algorithm is, is set for, for what you're doing. So it's, it's a very powerful report, automatically emailed to your store managers, who are the ones that control the, the schedule. This is where the rubber meets the road though. This is what we call revenue per guest. And this, the second list, now we've changed the names to protect the innocent. The second column here, RPG, revenue per guest, is the most important retail management tool, I believe, in the history of retail. And once you become familiar with that number, I think you'll agree. But let me move on here. Most of us, all of us, know what our dollar volume is, we know how many sales we made, so we know what our average sale is. What we don't have, accurately in most cases, is how many opportunities we have. So that's what we bring to the equation. And then with that, on the very far side, you'll see the actual conversion ratio for each store. So take a look at Houston here. Houston's got a, a very low revenue per guest. Their conversion ratio is 7.29%. So what revenue per guest is, is you can calculate it one of two ways. You can take your total dollar volume and divide it by your number of opportunities. So 42,800 divided by 617 is $69 per opportunity. So what that number is, is the dollar value of each opportunity if they purchased or not. So when you're comparing one store to another, it, it levels out the playing field. So if you've got one really large store, 10,000 opportunities a month, compared to another store that might have 500 opportunities a month, this number allows you to measure and compare the two. The second way you can calculate it is you multiply your average sale, 952, by your conversion ratio, or closing ratio. It comes up with the same number. Now, if you take a look at Youngstown, right in the middle there, that's, that's where I went to college, so I pick on Youngstown a lot, but. Youngstown has the lowest revenue per guest number in the chain, $54 per opportunity. Well, why is it so much lower? You see at the very bottom, the average revenue per guest is $136 company-wide. So Youngstown is really far off. Why is that? Well, if you look at the far side, you'll see their conversion ratio is 4.87%, less than one out of 20. Really bad, these are real numbers. So. The most astounding feature with Youngstown is if you look at the actual number of opportunities, they're getting more traffic than anyone else in the entire organization. They're getting two and a half times more traffic. So the bottom line is, well, the owner never really worried about Youngstown because they were always in the middle of the pack. Their, their sales volume was always right at the average. Their average is 71,000 per store. They're at 68 in this example for this one week. But the question becomes, if I'm successful at getting Youngstown from the $54 that they're at up to the average and assuming the traffic stays about the same, what does that represent for me? So if you do the math, that is a $104,000 increase in sales for that one week. This company's losing millions of dollars because they weren't measuring their customer traffic.
It allows a manager, or especially an, an upper level manager or owner, to identify which stores in my chain are below average. I like to call it the reverse Pareto principle, the 80-20, but if you focus on the bottom 20% in your company with this kind of analytics, you really don't have to focus on anything else. Everybody will get the picture. But the beautiful thing is, if I'm able to get Youngstown and Houston and any below average store, it's benchmark, so if it's red, it's below average, green, it's above average. But if I'm able to get those below average stores up to the average, the beautiful thing is the overall average increases, so it creates perpetual improvement. But it makes it really easy for an upper level manager to identify where the problems are. It won't tell you what the problems are, but it'll tell you you've got an issue there. It's either people or staffing or training. Something's wrong. Thank you for your time. Hope to talk with you soon.